Good afternoon, kids. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. We are so excited that we get to share a Thanksgiving story with you here today. And it is a special story that we are really excited to share, aren't we? Yes. I think I already said that, but it's because we are. We're just really excited to share. Really excited. And I have a special guest with me today. She is going to help me tell the story. Now, you're probably wondering, what is the title of our story? Well, I'm glad you asked, kids. It's called Mary's First Thanksgiving, and it's an inspirational story of gratefulness. And we just want to extend the Word of God to you today and to encourage you this week as you are preparing for Thanksgiving. So before our story, here's some words of encouragement from the Bible in Psalm 100. We're going to go ahead and we're going to we're gonna read these verses off. I'll have Ariana read the first verse and then I'll read the second and we'll take turns. So kids, if you want to follow along at home with your Bible, Psalm is right in the middle. Look at that, right in the middle of your Bible. Psalm, many of Psalms were written by David, who slew Goliath, and this was a Psalm of praise. Psalm 100. 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. What does everlasting mean? It means forever ever, and ever. Ever, 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 and ever, and ever, and ever. That's right. And so we have that great hope that God's love is never ending. And it's always, always there for you whenever you need it. So our story today takes place with a little girl named Mary. Mm -hmm. She was at school. Now some of you may be doing school at home. And some of you may be doing school at your school still. But this is Mary and this is what her schoolhouse looked like. She was looking out the window. The leaves had fallen, and every tree stood bare against the late autumn sky. The little black stove kept the room warm and cozy. Most days, Mary was happy her family had come to live in America. So she's not really from America. Her family came there. She felt lonely and missed her best friend, Elizabeth, back in Ireland. So if you didn't catch that, that means Mary's family is from Ireland. Mary's father was thankful to have his job shoveling coal, even though it was very hard work. Now Mary and her family had a little bit of food in the cupboard and enough wood to keep warm. I wonder what's going to happen. Hmm. So she's from Ireland, and it doesn't sound like they have very much at home. Well, when the bell rang, Mary gathered her books and started for home. She could hear other children talking about Thanksgiving. Tomorrow they would be feasting on turkey and pie with friends and family. Mary knew the most her family would be able to put on the table was extra bread with honey and perhaps a sausage or two. Doesn't sound like a very big feast to me, does it? No. Mm -mm. Wait, so they don't have turkey? Her family didn't. Apparently, they they were very poor, and they didn't have those things that some of the other kids did at her school. That's sad. It is, but I wonder what God has planned for Mary's life. Let's keep reading and find out, shall we, kids? Yes. When Mary got home, her mother asked, What's troubling you? Mary didn't answer. I have a surprise for you, Mary. Mrs. O'Connor brought us a gift. I don't want any pie. I don't want to live in America. We don't have turkey. We don't have any friends. There is nothing to be thankful about. Hmm. So it doesn't sound like she's very accepting about this gift that they were given of pie. I wonder why. Doesn't sound like Mary has a, hmm, has a very warm heart at this moment. 
Well, Mary felt a pinch in her heart when she looked up and saw her father standing in the doorway. Before Mary could apologize, her father spoke. Mary, I want to tell you a story. Long, long ago, a sailing ship fought stormy seas to come here. The passengers were from England, seeking a new life of freedom just like us. The colonists arrived in late December. Cold and hungry, many became sick and died. Have you heard that story in school? I, I think, didn't you learn about the pilgrims and the Mayflower back in history class? Yes, many, yeah. many times. So this does sound a little bit of a familiar story. Let's continue to see what the, her father has to say. Well, when spring came, those who remained were eager to start planting. Sadly, they soon realized the seeds they brought from England weren't right for this new land. Their Native American neighbors offered to help by showing them how to grow crops and where to find food and land around them. The colonists were grateful. It was a time of peace and friendship, and there was plenty of food to eat. Well, that's good for them. It is. Ooh, look at this next page. <gasps> Ooh, I see turkey and fruits and... D do you think we should show them? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's such a great picture. Here it is. Look. You see that? Ooh. Oh, by the way, that looks like something we're going to be eating here in a few days. Yeah. I think it's cooking in the oven or in the fridge thawing. Or it is. Thawing in the fridge right now. Yay! When autumn came, they were so thankful that they planned a celebration with their new friends. For three days, they feasted on venison, geese, corn, beets, beans, grapes, and chestnuts. But, Father, life got better for them. It is still hard for us. We only have a few things to eat, and I don't have any friends, not even one. Hmm. So it sounds like they had a lot of different kinds of foods in that picture. What's your favorite thing to eat at Thanksgiving? pie and turkey. I like mashed potatoes. What oh, about you guys? What do I you like guys like? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like mashed Ooh, potatoes. That too. sounds really yummy too. Mm, I know. I love cooking Thanksgiving meal. Mm. Mm. So her father continued the story. Can you see part of it? You want to see all? Here we go. But you see, not long after the feast, they realized that they had not stored away enough food for the oncoming winter. Each person was allowed only a small amount of food each day so it would last. The next season, their crops failed. For months, they survived only on clams, fish, and ground nuts. And a few kernels of corn each day for each of them. Now, I like corn on the cob, and I like cream corn. Wait, so you're saying pieces? Those little tiny kernels. They were only allowed a few a day to live on. That's barely enough for uh, someone to survive. Well, let's continue, because I know you're wondering what happens. One hot day, the colonists came together to pray for help. The next morning, it began to rain. I think it's raining today here in Hanover. Yeah, it's <gasps> raining outside right now. It was raining for them. God had answered their prayers. For the rest of the season, the crops flourished, and more ships arrived with food and supplies. The colonists gave their thanks to God, as they should, of course. It is said that years after that celebration, the colonists placed five kernels of corn on their plates to remind them of the hardships they endured. They gave thanks for the blessings each kernel represented. Five kernels. Hmm. Oh, here's, oh, here's a picture of them. Five little kernels of corn. The first kernel represented the beauty and bounty of autumn. The second kernel represented their love for one another. The third kernel represented their love for their families. And the fourth kernel represented their friendship with the Native Americans. The fifth kernel represented their freedom to worship God without fear. I like that. That's a, that's a really neat thing. Well, it appears the father has just about to finish telling the story. I wonder what Mary's reaction is going to be. Me too. Do you guys have an idea? She could either be really sad, she may even be mad, or maybe there's a change going to happen in her heart. 
I hope that's the one that happens. I'm pretty sure it's going to be that her heart changed. Our life in America may not be perfect, Mary, her mother added. But there are many blessings we can be thankful for, like the O'Connor family. I'm very thankful for Mrs. O'Connor's pumpkin pie. Next year at Thanksgiving, there will be more food at our table. But this year, I'm thankful for what we have. Mary's father sure has a very good outlook about life. He's thankful and grateful for whatever God has given him. And that's a good place to be ourselves. Mary's mother continued with her thankfulness. I'm thankful for the love the three of us share. Mary's father added a fourth blessing. I am grateful that in America, we can worship God without fear. Mary, surely you can name one thing you're grateful for. Well, Mary thought for a moment and then said, I am thankful that Hannah O'Connor smiles at me. It makes me feel like we are becoming friends. Oh, that's a good thing to be thankful for. Well, Mary's mother said, our five things are very much like the colonists' five at those first Thanksgivings. You're right, Mother. When I see Hannah O'Connor at church on Sunday, I will tell her the story of the five colonels and that I am thankful she wants to become my friend. Oh, what a wonderful change in Mary's heart. And look, here she is going to church. She's so excited. She's waving to her friends. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. Well, there's a little bit more that we want you to know about these five kernels of corn. You see, in 1820, at the bicentennial celebration of the landing at Plymouth Rock, Daniel Webster, a well-known Boston lawyer, spoke about the hardships the pilgrims endured and how they changed the course of the nation. At the banquet that followed, five kernels of corn were placed at each setting. This tradition has taken root in homes across the nation. The five kernels remind people of sacrifices made by the first colonists during what later became known as the starving time. Most of all, they are a reminder that Thanksgiving is a time for reflection and gratitude. That's right, a time for reflection and gratitude. Well, let's see if we can answer some questions. All right, boys and girls, get your fingers ready. If you know the answer, write your answer in the comments. Here's our first question. You ready? What was the name of the little girl who our story was about? <gasps> Don't say it. I'm going to give them a few seconds. Let's see. I remember it. All right, five. Four, three, two, one. Wait. Do you guys know it? Say it. Okay. Mary. It is. It's Mary. Very good. All right. Next question. <laughs> what time of year does our story take place? I'm going to give you four seconds to get this one. Ready? Four, three, two, one. It was Thanksgiving. Very good. And last question. How many kernels of corn were in our story? Ready? I'm going to give you three seconds for that one. Ready? Three, two, one. It's five. Very good. And let's remind ourselves what those five kernels of corn stand for, shall we? Here's that picture to remind us. The first kernel represented the beauty and bounty of autumn, like the season. The second kernel represents them represented their love for one another so that they love each other. Like the third that. kernel yeah. represented their love for their families. Yes. The, the fourth, fourth kernel, kernel represented their friendship with the Native Americans. So we can say now, like, the fourth kernel for us would represent our friendship with our friends around us. And the fifth kernel represented their freedom to worship God Without, Without fear. fear. That's right. So think about those five kernels. The first one, about the gratefulness of the season. The second, love for one another. The third, love for your family. <laughs> okay. The fourth, their friendship. And five, that they get to worship God. Maybe at your Thanksgiving table or maybe sometime this week, you want to take five little kernels of corn and put those on your table. 
If you do so, let us know or send us a picture. We would love to see that. Ultimately, remember, God is so good. His mercy is everlasting. everlasting. Ever and ever and ever and ever. That's and ever right. And, ever. and he loves you so much. And we love you and we are praying for you. Everyone, you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday and a great Thanksgiving. And we'll see you soon. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. bye. Yay. Gabriel, say bye. Say bye. <laughs> Toby, say bye. He said bye. <laughs> Very good. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Oh. Happy Thanksgiving. Here we go. Mr. Giraffe, say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. We're going to go and drink our coffee now. Cheerio. Have a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving.